Okay, briefly, I'm going to be talking on right living while waiting. Right living while waiting. Singleness is not a cause, it's a state in life. So, and you know, when you are single, you are waiting to get married. So there are some basic principles that you ought to live by while waiting. While waiting for the wedding, while waiting for the ring, while waiting for the D-Day, the day you call us for Shibi. There are some certain tenets that you have to live as, as a Christian, as a single lady. I said being single is not a cause, it's a state in life. You know, there are stages in life. There are a stage where you become, when you're a baby. And they say, oh, what did she give birth to? It's a baby girl. And everyone say, wow, beautiful girl, princess. And then from there, she goes from a baby. She becomes a God and his righteousness. And then every other thing will be added unto you. So being a single person, one of the things that you need to do is pursue God, not pursue marriage. Because sometimes we, mis we, we, we misplace our priority. Pursue God, not pursue marriage. Because sometimes you see some people, you know, there are sometimes that you have younger singles, we have older singles. And then, we have you know, older singles, we have younger singles. And then sometimes you see some, they'll be like, ah, in my younger single stage, what we were doing was pursuing relationships, pursue marriage. But what you need to do as a single person is, first of all, pursue God. That's why the Bible says, seek you first, the kingdom of God. Is it a marriage? It will be added unto you. Every other thing will be added unto you. Don't get to a stage in your single life when we say, mm, that was when we were much younger. You know, and the Bible said of Joshua, he said, as it was, as I, I, I'm as strong as I am. That was when he was 85 years. He said, I was as strong as I am over 40 years ago when we still conquered Jordan. When we still conquered the pro Canaan, the promised land. When we still conquered Canaan, I said, I am a strong. So there's no age. You, have, you need to that. You say, no, if I believe him, was it? No. Zealously pursue the Lord. So I said, we're talking on right living while waiting. Right living while waiting. And I said, while waiting, one of the things you do is say, pursue God, don't pursue marriage. And he said, and yet, I am as strong as this day, I wa as I was in the days of Moses. This was someone that was 86 years old. He said, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. So it's not a time, you know, sometimes when people, when they get maybe a little oh, um, older singer, they'll be like, no, there are some things I won't do. Sometimes when they even call programs like this, they won't come. They want to join the married people. When the married people are joining programs, they say, no, I'm going to go me film more. But no, utilize it. It's a stage that when you pass, you will not come back to it. When you, how many of us are now girls? We've passed that girlhood stage. And then there are sometimes when you see some children, you're like, oh yeah, we're on soup, but more for nature. Because you've, and you've never, you can never get back to that stage. And that's the thing about being single, you can never get back to it. So don't walk through your singlehood with mourning, with an attitude of mourning. No, you should gracefully walk with it. That is a stage that will pass. It is a stage that you should enjoy. It's a stage that you should, you should enjoy and enjoy in the Lord. So now, what are the ways you should, what, you should, what are the ways to live right while waiting? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 34. We read from verse 34 to 37. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 34 to 17. He said, there is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. Okay. Now, the single lady, when she is in, in, in the biblical days and in the Christianhood, we refer to single ladies as virgin because we believe that there should be virgins. So now, it said there is a difference between a wife, someone that is not married, and then a virgin, someone that is married. He said, the unmarried cared for the things of the Lord that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. And she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. It's not like she doesn't actually care for, it's not like she doesn't actually, um, she doesn't actually care for the things of, of God. But sometimes she has her attention in many, 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 many places. Her attention can be divided. Sometimes she can be in church and she's thinking, Say we need to cook this afternoon. We need to cook. How, how, how am I going to settle? How are we going to um, settle things at home? Those children, what are they going to do? How are they going to do? You know, yesterday I was caught up in some kind of traffic and I was stranded. I got home like 
after 10, I think to 11 last, um, last night. So there were many things on my mind. And I was now like, and first on my side, I said, you see, I, I wish I was single. I wasn't thinking of, because all of us there were married. We had children in Onitra. So where I went to. And I was like, ah, I was supposed to be in singles program yesterday. Ah, what happened? And my, and this phone I left for them in my home. The phone went off. The, the thing switched off. I couldn't reach them at home. I was just concerned. Pastor was in pastor's meeting. In fact, my brain was, how are these children coping at home? home. How are these children coping at home? How will I, will I be able to meet up for the singles program? I was still, I was still at work then, battling as at that time of the night. And I was still, how will I come back home? But you know, if I was single, the easiest thing I would have just done is look for where to sleep that night. Why was I, why would I come home? Trying to come home by 11. I would just look for where to sleep. I said, hi, hello, how far? I'm sleeping this night in your house. Like, you know, you might have a friend now, a girlfriend, you can just, I'm just like that. And no worries, no sorrows. You just maybe call my parents and say, I can't come back. Going out. They won't say, you stay, stay, stay. But the state I was, it's not that kind of state that I can, I can be comfortable. Even where I was, I was safe, but I was not comfortable. Your mind was distracted. You know, that was the life of a married. That was the life of a married woman. I can just, you know, that was the life of a married woman. She had responsibilities. So now I said, the unmarried cared for the things of the Lord. So one of the right living that I said that you should live is, number one, care for the things of the Lord. You know, your service time, the most time that you can be productive for God is now that you are single. I'm not saying as a married person you cannot be productive, but the truth is, if you are not zealous as a single person, it will be difficult when you have other responsibilities attached to you. Some people that I see them zealous, even when they are married, they're always on fire, they're always on energy. It's because as single ladies, they were always on fire and they were always on energy. It's not when they now have responsibilities attached to you. Just use that responsibility. I say, you know, I'm married. You know, you know when some people tell me that they have children? I say, the one I have, are they all You know, I have children. You know, I have to, my, I have to go to the market. I, do not tell anybody to go to the market. You know, I have to go to business, my business, and my husband. Ah, ah. You know, that's why some people give those kind of excuses. So the unmarried person, what you need to do is care for the things of the Lord. You see, that's number one. You see, so now, you said, some version said that she is devoted to the Lord. That is what they used to know single ladies. So sometimes I see some single ladies, they'll tell you they are busy, they are busy. They are. I, wonder, I used to wonder, what are they busy doing? You don't have time for God. And the truth is, it is, when you, it is in God. You know, sometimes, you, it's just like me now. I don't work for First Bank. I don't work for First Bank. And you know, and every time First Bank is sharing, and I don't have shares there. I don't work for First Bank. I don't have shares there. And anytime First Bank is sharing dividend, I just want to come and I want to go and collect dividend. Anytime First Bank is um, sharing, giving salary, I want to come and I'll be like, I want to collect salary. You know, that's how it is sometimes with us. We don't, we don't devote ourselves to the things of God. When it comes to the reward of the kingdom, we want to be first partakers of it. There are some things that are heritage of those that serve God. But sometimes we'll be claiming heritage of those that serve God while we are not partaking in service. You're like, God, these are the things that you do for your children. These are the what are the things that you are doing for God? How is your life counting in the kingdom? If you need the benefits of that it is service that you do in God's kingdom. So what is your devotion to as a single lady? What is your devotion to? Because most times we have misplaced priorities. There's nobody that I see serving God that God does not reward at the end of the day. So which principles are you following? If you follow the principles of the world, of the world what you get is the reward of the world. If you follow the principles of the kingdom, what you follow? So you don't need to be, you cannot be taking this road to Enugu and you expect to, you expect to meet yourself in Lagos. It's not possible. That's the same thing. You cannot be working for the world system and you expect to be blessed God way. It's not possible. You know, someone met me one day and said, please, oh, please, I don't know, every time unbelievers are always coming to meet me for uh, my hand in marriage. Unbelievers are coming to ask me hand in marriage. I said, ah, now where did you go that you saw this unbeliever? I said, the time I went for a wedding and I now saw him. The next one, it was, I went to my village, you know, and they now connected me. And the other one I went, went for one traditional marriage like that, and now connected me. I said, hey, now, when we finish doing encounter for you, I'm finished doing deliverance, you carry that anointing. Like now, we're going to do favor for marriage. Favor. You now carry that favor for marriage. And the next place that you went to was your village. It's your village people, because there's anointing of marriage upon you. It is your village people that that favor will be attracting. You know, one of the pastors that raised me, Pastor Law, he said, when we finish praying for you for marriage, don't stay in your room. 
Because if you stay in your room and you are reading a novel, now one day your houseboy will come and say, Hi, Auntie, you are very beautiful. <laughs> yes, because that is where the favor is attracting. So when you now have that favor, when we now pray for you, favor for marriage, please go to where you want to be seen. If you do have that favor for marriage and you go to clubbing, it is those club men that will be asking your hand in marriage. So now to that one will tell you, come for programs, come to help HQ, come to, you will not come to where godly men are. It's not where you come to where, you know, that was the advice that Naomi gave Ruth. He said, wait, this is how you are going to find your husband. Go to where a godly man is. So sometimes where you are found, it should be strategic as a single lady. You should not be found in the wrong places. Go to where the godly men are. If you go to your village, it's your village people that will propose to you. Every weekend, I'm going to the village. If it's not buried, if somebody's doing um, um, Ibanko, then from there, you are doing Ashibi from somebody. It is, those are the places that you will see your husband. With all the favor and the anointing I was giving you in Dominion City. So why waiting? You need strategic um, relation. Be sound in strategic places. Your places should be strategic. If you're seeing where club is, you know, like what um, Pastor Amaka taught us, he said that we should have friends that are, because the truth is, you marry from your circle or from connections in your circle. Sure, you know, it's either there's somebody in your circle connected you, or you marry from places in your circle. You, nobody goes. So don't think that your husband is in one faraway land. Yeah, it's either he's connected to the person in your circle, because that's how they will now connect you, or he's in that your circle. That's those places that you go. It's not one stranger that will just come and just meet you one place. So what are your circles? Where are you strategically located? And that was why Naomi said, no, 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 no. This is how, no, these are roots. This is how you are going to go. And that was how she followed the right mentorship. So sometimes when your um, leader or your pastor's wife is telling you, or your mentor is telling you, please be at this meeting, be at this meeting. It could be strategic, but you may not know. So I was saying, please, let's go back to that, our scripture. I said, as she is devoted to the Lord. Because the truth is, in your devotion to the Lord, that's where your true beauty comes in. Because the true beauty radiates from inside out. It is not from the makeups that you do. The makeups actually they modify the outward appearance. But the true beauty of a woman radiates from inside out. That's why the Bible said you should seek that inner beauty that is of a meek and a quiet spirit. So the lady, she um, the single, the right way is that she lives single. Then they said that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. So, the first one, devoted to the Lord. Then the second one, she is holy in the body. And then the third one, she is holy in the spirit. She is holy in the body, number two. And then number three is that she is holy in the spirit. So, as a single lady, you know, that scripture said, there is a difference between the wife and the virgin. But some of us are not yet... Um, married, but some of us are already wives without being married. They're already playing wife. They're already playing wife rule. Uh -huh. They're already playing wife rule. Some people have this thing that they must always be in a relationship and just to please somebody. They must always be in a relationship. No. Your singlehood is a time where you first of all discover yourself who you are. Who are you? Discover yourself. Then discover where am I going? Who are you? And it is you cannot, you don't, nobody, nobody has an identity outside God. Because we're all created to be like Christ. Even if you're a Christian, you're a believer or an unbeliever, even if you're not a Christian, that is why an unbeliever cannot go far, because he does not find his identity in Christ. Wherever you are, because you are created by God. And that was what, that is who you find your identity. When God created you, he created you with a purpose. He created you with something in mind. You, didn't just, you don't just go to the market and just buy something. You don't know what you want to use it for. You don't know what it is. That's why, why did you buy this thing? I don't know. What I go to use it for? I don't know. I just went to buy it. You too, you know it's waste. And God is not a man of waste. So don't think that you are useless or they don't, you don't have any use anymore. No, when God created you, he had something in mind. And he had a purpose for you to fulfill in mind. So that is what you need to discover. So why wait in the right attitude of living? And you know, there's someone that is living with a purpose, lives with principles. There are some things that you have guarding you because you have a destination. If two of us, I said, come, let's escort me. And you, you know that you have an appointment by 12. And you need to go to, maybe you need to reach Opiwaka by 12. And me that needs to reach Chicken Republic in this um, poor by 12. I can afford to trek. There's still time. And when you ask me, I'm like, there's still time. I can get to Mr. Biggs by 12. But you that is going to get to maybe Opiwaka by 12, you know you cannot afford to trek. 
because you have an appointment. So knowing your purpose helps you to know your time and know your know the number one. It helps you to even know the kind of people that you relate to. I tell Christians, not everybody that you relate to, unless you are preaching the gospel to them. Like what she said, said you don't keep unbelievers as friends. It's not everybody that you are relating to. You know, somebody said one of the problems Eve had is talking to the serpent in the same place. That is not everybody that you talk to. All this, I'm trying to be nice, I'm trying to be nice. In the, in the name of being nice, you are now loose. And they'll be like, ah, no, don't, you are too stiff, you are too stiff. In the name of being, I mean, let me not be too stiff, you are now loose. From now, you are now too stiff. You are now like, ah, let, me, let me try to loosen up. Everybody said, I'm too stiff, I'm too stiff. See, a Christian lady, you need to be firm. Yes, you need to know what your, you need to make your boundaries to be known. Let, it, let everybody be know that these are her, her boundaries. These are the things that you do. No, as a single lady, I had this principle. Say, no guy comes to me, uh, to my room, because I had a problem. I had an opportunity of living alone, maybe as a student or as a, as a student and even as a working class single. So I had the opportunity of living alone. I had principles. You don't come to, why are you looking for me? For what? How? And then some of us, sometimes we have, you know, pastor taught us something. He said, women flock with women. Girls flock with girls. Guys keep guys as friends. Any guy that keeps a lady as friend has an ulterior motive. Ask them. They don't keep ladies. as I'm confiding in you. I'm, no, they have ulterior motives. Don't think that it is just, unless it's a brother, sister, they sent you for evangelism. Girls flock with girls. All this one, that I don't know, I don't have... I don't have um, any girlfriend. I don't know. I don't have girlfriends. What I have is only men. I just, I float well with men. I, all, my guy, all my friends are guys. All my friends are guys. That is a demonic spirit. You need to encounter. No, it's true. All your friends should not be guys. Ladies flock with ladies. Girls flock with ladies. You know, Pastor told us that in those days in the Israelites, that when they are going, that they go in groups. That ladies, they go in groups. It's not this one that they go alone, alone. Fear them all. It's true. You have sisters around, especially when you come to church. You have sisters around. They're like, okay, greet somebody by your side, smile. You just, you just put your face straight. Then those with ulterior motive, they're like, no, how would I be talking to a, a girl like me? You will now go and meet. Uh, it is only guys that you meet. And in the name of, um, because you say ladies flock with ladies, that doesn't mean that um, you should now, um, because they're like, no, I don't need ladies. You know, those come from wound. You now say, okay, let me have maybe sexual relationship with ladies. I don't mean that. I mean that you have friends like ladies. Ladies flock with ladies. If you don't have friends, try to make friends with ladies. Don't say men are, no, I, I, men, they understand better. They don't understand better. A lady flocks with a lady. You know, that was why the Bible said, and when you are talking to, when you are talking, there's a, Bible, there's a way the Bible taught um, Timothy, because he was a young pastor, how to relate with the opposite sex. Let's open to First um, Peter chapter 5. So we are talking of holy in body. First Peter chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5, I think. I said First Peter. Um, first Timothy, Yes. Okay, he was talking to Timothy how he should treat people in church because he was a young man, a very young man, not married. He said, rebook not an elder, but entreat him as a father. So when you're a leader in church and you see someone an elder, treat him as a father. Then the younger men say, treat them as brethren. Then two. The older women say, treat them as mothers. Then when it comes to sisters, when it comes when you're relating the man and the female, because he was talking to Timothy. He now said, with the younger sisters, he said, Treat them with the women, younger women. He said, treat them as sisters with all purity. So that is, that is the word, purity. So every single lady should not be, you know, should not let her lowest down. Because sometimes you see some people, and some people in the bid to deceive you, they will now tell you, no, nah, you are too firm. Nobody will marry you like that. Tell them, nah, I'm not too firm. No. You know, when I was single, tell people tell me, ha. Chine said, with all these your rules and regulations, somebody told, they called me one day, meeting in my office. They said, Chine said, with all these your rules and regulations, we will see who will marry you. And all of them, they saw who will marry me. And they saw who married me. <laughs> No, because uh, my rules were too much. And sometimes, even if you touch me, I'd be like, sir, you don't touch women like that. They say, no, nah, we are okay? bonka. You don't touch women like that. Then I say, how will come? Let's come to your house now. Eh, eh, what do you want? Is it food? I'll bring food to the office. I hear you. Ah, like, you are too principled. Then I say, what type of, what are you doing this evening? I say, we have church. Say, on Monday, we have singles fellowship. On Tuesday, workers meeting. On Wednesday, we have midweek service. On Thursday, we have evangelism and church planting. See, do you have time to rest? I say yes. On, on Friday, I wash my clothes. So what about Saturday? We do MVP and follow up. 
On Sunday after church, what will you do? We'll go for teens meeting. We'll go for hype. So I said, you don't have time. No, so it's not today that I started. I'll come to church every day. So you guys complain, we come to church every day. It is not today that it started. We used to go to church every day. It, it has, it, it day. No, be today. And then, you know, and most of them, when they saw, because someone, because sometimes you follow the principles of the world. They're like, you know, one lady came and she was advising another lady then in my office. She said, ha -ha. Now the guy is always asking her to kiss. I said, let me tell you, whether you kiss, you, that kiss is also part of sexual immorality. He said, no. She said, that's why you're too stiff. I said, don't worry. You will see my husband. I was not even in a relationship then. But the thing I know that if you follow principles and service, it works. I don't mean that you should be rude to people. But there's something about you having your moral standards laid out. And people know that these are the things that you do. These are the things that are obvious for you to do. These are the things. It's not that you are always with that, let me do now. So that they will not be like, eh. you know, sometimes they come and be deceiving you. They say, hey, if you don't do like this, eh, nobody will marry you. If you don't do like this, you will be old. You will be, you will be old. It is not true. Most times, what are things that, one of the things that causes delay in marriage is because of sexual immorality. Those are the things that cause, especially when you go into sexual immorality with, that are anti-covenant practices, like, and the ones that are into perversion, like, Relationship with um, someone in covenant, someone that is married. Mm -hmm. Then anti-covenant practice and perversion, sleeping with in or incensed. Those are the things that. So get your boundaries known. All these, hey, please try to be nice, try to be. In fact, you know, go to a extent that there was somebody in church one day, he was in our teens ministry, we were both teens pastor. And he said, and somebody said, ah, what do you marry Chinese? I said, no, Chinese is pastor's wife. Now, principally, I can no, because sometimes it's because of all those principles that you now open the door and now say one thing led to another. Then you now know. Then before you know it, it now led to another. It became pregnant. It now led to another. Because of shame, you now aborted. A Christian lady has history of five abortions on the way and we are still praying for her to get married. So those things have spiritual repercussions and you don't know. It's the best time to lay your foundation because as a single lady, you are laying your foundation. It's not every time you see everybody, hey, how are you? You are hugging. You know, there's an impression those things give to people around you. There's an impression that those things give to people around you. They will know the kind of person that you are from the way that you act. So let your boundaries be known to all. All this I'm going to, um, they've not even asked you. They're like, let me come and cook food for you. My mother taught me how to cook. Your mother taught you how to cook, but she has been begging you in the house since. Yeah, just to quit that, just to quit that. You did not do it, but you went to school. You went to somebody's house and was pounding it there for him to cook. Since she was begging you, wake up, cook food, or I'm going out. You are pressing your phone. Your mother was begging you at home. And that's why it's like, my mother is persecuting me. I want to leave the house. When will I leave this house? You're not going to rent house somewhere so that you have your freedom. You say, I want to have my freedom. You know, sometimes when you ask single ladies, why are you leaving your parents? You are your parents. You live in the same town. Why are you not living in your parents' house? I say, no, I have freedom. Freedom to do what? Because the truth is, as a single lady, it's a time to serve. Serve is both at home and in church. I'm not saying if you have a service daughter because you need, the, you need the continual blessing of your parents. Because there are some things that you even do at home. Your parents are daily blessing you. Daily. They don't need to wait till the wedding day before they pour out all the blessing. Sometimes, like, I need my freedom. I need, I need, what I need is I need my freedom. Because I try my I try my own end. How old are you? That's the things that are bringing delay. Because while waiting, one of the things you build is character. How to live with the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. Because even if the good, the bad, and the ugly doesn't come from your husband, you have in-laws too. That may be good, the bad, and the ugly. And you cannot chase them out of their house. They, will, they may one day come to stay with you. So that is the time you also build emotional um, intelligence and how to live with them. So most times you say to them, I'm like, ah, but your parents live in this house. And you say, I'm I need my freedom. No, when you're in a relationship, be accountable. Don't go into a relationship without accountability. Yes. When you are in a relationship, let your relationship be accountable. Don't do mushroom relationship like, see, let's relate. Don't tell pastor. Don't tell pastor. It's just, it's just two of us. Let's just be doing this thing on our own, on our own. It is not the lifestyle of a Christian. We are accountable. Don't go and do, hey, just, let's be doing this thing. It is just, it is just me and them. Um, it is just two of us. It's just me and pastor. You know, one of the pastors that taught me, she said, um, she said that was how she was teaching, she was teaching someone um, that you need to be accountable in your relationship. And then somebody, you know all these people that always hang around ministers now? 
So there was this lady that was always hanging around her. And every time she comes, she just come carry pastor's bag. She now come. And she was just leaving her. But she was dealing with demonic problem in this life of this lady. Because sometimes you see some people around. You don't know the road. Some of them are ministers. I'm not saying everybody around our pastors are bad. You know, sometimes you see some people, they come to church and they are so zealous. And then you will now be like, hi, I, I, I was my, and he said, you should not tell pastor. Just don't tell pastor we're in a relationship. Just don't tell pastor. And you'll be there. You don't know that person has already proposed to five people and saying, don't tell pastor, don't tell pastor. And that's how you put yourself into trouble. Don't tell pastor, and then you now enter, you now enter one chance. Please make sure your relationships are accountable. Be accountable in your relationships. Anybody that asks you, should I go out, let your pastor know, let your mentors know. And tell him to go and tell you, you have authorities. That's why I said, women are given in marriage, men marry. They should meet the authorities over your life. The authorities of your parents, the authorities of your pastor. They should meet them. Not even for marriage, even for relationship. Yes, so at the day they will break too, they will come and meet them. Because all this one that you do, that's why you say, ah, I'm engaged today. Ah, yeah, seriously, who? John Paul. He said, okay. Ah, next, next three months, you now meet her. I said, ah, Stella, how far? He said, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm engaged. I said, I know you're engaged. I said, no, it's not John Paul again. It's Friday. He said, ah, ah Friday. Ah, how or when? Where did that one happen? Next two months, you now see her. And I said, ah, how far? So when are you on Friday coming for primarita? He said, ah, no, it's uh, Memeka. He said, Buka. You know, it happens. Don't say, ah, it happens. You see a lot of them, they go from one heart. And that's how their hearts keep breaking. And then before you know it, they are now scared of relationship. Before you know it, they are now portraying wounds. They are now portraying wounds anyhow. When you, a lady that is graceful, you should learn to know, learn to respect authorities over your life. The authority of your parents, the authority of your mentor, the authority of your pastor, the authority of your pastor's wife. Learn to respect that authority. Because what? The Bible said, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors, they received him. Because most times, it's all those relationships that will now make you, before you know, before you even left Ebuka, you have committed to abortion. Before you left um, this one, you have slept with him. It's a mistake, it's a mistake. How did you now control the mistake? So let your, make your boundaries clear and obvious. And I don't mean, you know, sometimes you like, something will be like, eh, is, is they said, if I'm not too, I'm too strict, I'm too strict. No, I didn't say you should be rude to people. You know, there's nothing rude and let your principles to be clear. Like me, I didn't say you should now say nobody, if no more principles work for you, please do. Because I, like me, I, I did not entertain that. In fact, the day when somebody from church came and brought somebody to my house, I was really angry. I was like, I don't entertain men in my house. I don't care. If they say they want to come and see if I'm arranging my house. I do not ask, if you are not satisfied, leave. Because those things, they are, not, they are not necessary. Because sometimes, you know, sin thrives in secrecy. In secrecy. So most times, when you are now, when you, see, when, you, when you habitually create an environment where it is only you and a guy, you and a guy, you and a guy, before you know it, that is how one thing leads to another. That is how one thing always leads to another. Maybe he came to one and now said, ah, I, I, you know, I know, I just came around, though. I'm in Soprom Hotel. I'm lonely. Just come and take me around. Take me around. And he said, hey, let me go now. You know, he's my friend, though. He said he doesn't know anywhere in nature. He's in the Soprom Hotel. He's lonely. Let me just go and see him. And then he now went to see him. Now I said, come, let's chat. Let's chat. He went to the Soprom room, room 102, and you're now chatting and chatting and chatting. Only two of you. And then you now watch a movie. Then from there, you don't know what happened. No, you were the one that created that environment. You were the one that created that environment. So make your boundaries known. Then you should also create boundaries of time. There are some times that a lady should not be seen out unless you maybe went to church. You know, I saw created boundaries of time and accountability that, you know, there was a time, because my parents stayed in the north and I was schooling in the east, and there was a time they came to see me, and they, they came to my hostel, and they didn't see me, and they were around, ah, what happened? And the people in the hostel now said, ah, she went for a, and my mom was like, my, my daughter didn't go anywhere, she went for a church conference. But you know some of you, your mom, can, your mom cannot boldly say that. And when she now asked her friends, now she went for a church conference, and all of them in their fellowship, they went for a church conference in Abuja. There were no phones, there were no phones that day, so it's not like I could take permission. We didn't have phones when I went to university, so it's not like we played, I, before I graduated, after I graduated, so it, it took me like two years before I bought a phone, I finally bought a phone. You know, some people had after, those days we the number, so we gave our friends our numbers, we are keeping the numbers till the day we buy phone. So we bought SIM card. Till the day we will buy phone. <laughs> so I couldn't call my, I couldn't call anybody to say, hey, I'm going to Abuja for a conference or a meeting or so. But some of us, your parents cannot boldly come and say, ah, she went for, immediately they also had that she did not stay in school for that weekend. I say, hey, Uncle Ben Walker. Because they've known your character from 
from time immemorial. Even my colleagues in the office, we know that ah, she didn't come to work this Friday. Maybe they have one church conference or church meeting or something. So it was as simple as space, put this face your fear on your status. To you, it was a detriment to your image. How will I put it on my status? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Are we getting something? So I said, we should let our boundaries, we should let our boundaries known. No, please, you shouldn't fall to, uh, let me try to be nice, let me try to be, and uh, they said that uh, you don't hold me like this, uh, just be holding me so that let me know if I will get married. Uh, don't, they're not, it's not that bad, man. That, those are not the ways that God said we should get married. Mm? So let principles, get those things. So he said, have accountability. So I was saying, would, they, would they, will parents be able to say, or will people around you be able to say, ah, she's not home this weekend, and, ah, she went to a guy's house, because maybe they've been seeing you around. It may be true, it may be false. But because of your character, because you have, you have had questionable characters around, that's why they can actually say those things. So I said, be holy in your body. That was the, the second devotion of the woman. She's devoted to the Lord, and then she's holy in her body. Learn purity. Learn to get... Because, you know, sometimes <laughs> there are many consequences of those um, of, of sexual sin. That, uh, that, there's someone that will teach us on that. That's, that's not my topic. But while waiting, a lady has grace. The Bible said the king's daughter, she is glorious within. She is all glorious. She carries herself with charisma. She's not at the mercy of people. You know, you don't carry yourself so much that people will pity you say, yeah, hi, this lady, she's not married to her. Hey, yeah. Yeah. You know, some people have this dejection, something like they're always depressed or they're always in a dejected spirit. Because, no, a lady, she carries herself with grace. She carries herself. With grace. Why? Because, as I said, being single is the time you discover who you are. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? Because, and that is when you start doing what you are supposed to be doing. Because if you are not doing what you are supposed to be doing, is there any how person that can come? You'll be like, ah, oh, this person. If, because you will now know who the person that aligns to your purpose. It will be easy for you to know the person that aligns to your purpose. Like what our mommy said, she said, her daughter was saying no, no, no. Because the lady knows where she's going. And people that were coming, they, I'm sure they were born again. Mommy said they were born again. They were all born again people. It's not like they were unbelievers that were smoking and, and drinking. No. These ones were all born again. But she knew that they were not going in the same direction. Maybe she had married them. She would still go to heaven. They would still be coming to church. They would be going to be not But the people, the best, those people didn't just align to her purpose. She didn't just have peace there. Because sometimes you see some people at the prayer point. I want, want to get married, born again, anyhow, anyone. Just let it be born again. I'm content. No. It, it, this person is born again, but the person needs to align to your purpose. A lady dresses her skin, gets herself with graciousness. She takes herself with, you know, you are not, we are not being strong, we are not struggling. Um, it is one, is it, is it one I should wear? Is it one? No, it's because we don't know our words. We don't know what we are looking for. That's why you are looking for. Is it this one I should wear? Should I wear this one? Is this one, did it open? Why is it people are always giving us problems in this church? Is this, this one, is it open like this? Is it? No, because you know who you are. You know your words, you know your value. That's what every lady needs to know. Know your words, know your value. Because if you know your words, there are some places... There are some places that you should not, they should not be prizing you. Praise the Lord. You know, there are some cars that you, when you park them, it's not all cars that when you go, they'll put gallon, jerry can on their head and they say for sale. And it's not all cars that are like that. There are some cars that you, they don't, you, you dare not see them. They put gallon on their head and say jerry can for sale. So that's how it is with ladies. There are some places that they should not be prizing you. There are some people that should not be, because you are the king's daughter. People should count their teeth and their tongue. You, because you carry yourself with grace. You carry yourself with dignity. You carry yourself with honor. That is what you should be doing as a single lady. And you are, left, you are not left to the... Because sometimes, it, the spirit of dependency, because sometimes as a single lady, because we don't develop skills, we now have an entitlement mentality that men... You know, I was doing a breakout session once, and somebody said, hey, you know now, as women now, we, men are supposed to be giving us things every day. I said, why? Well, chapter what, verse what? Please, if you still see it in the Bible, please tell me so that I will know where it is. Say, so I need to be showing myself that. She said this week, uh, now she needs prayers because this week no man has um, told her to enter the car. And because she said she came from school, no man told her to enter the car to, that she, to, to, to show her favor, to give her favor. That, you know, you need to be collecting things from man. That is a, a, a stupid mentality. Because if she is selfish, she has developed herself, developed a skill, she will, not be, she will not fall at the mercy of she needs to always get things from men. That is why she also falls to temptation. And she even had the gods to say, please come and pray for me so that they will still be giving me money. <laughs> money that you did not work for. 
Yes, because sometimes we need to, because we need to free, free, you know, there's only saying that my mom used to say, any lady that does not have long throat will be safe for life. And it, because she, yeah, it, what she meant is that godliness with content, I used to tell her that what in the Bible, what it means is godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah, because sometimes one of the things that lead women to the things they do is that, in the layman's language, that long throat. So a woman should have a skill and should be self-developed. To be self-sufficient. When I mean self-sufficient, that doesn't mean, you know, there's a difference between, because there's now, there's a generation that will say, uh, we should be a boss lady. You know, someone said, is a boss lady. I didn't mean boss lady. Mm. Because boss lady, that, that one has another interpretation. It means it's promoting a feminism that you can do without people. No, the Bible said, you can create this independent of each other. So a lady should have that self-sufficient that she can, earn, she can earn her own skill and earn for herself. So if she's going into marriage, it's not to, because marriage is not the cure to your financial problems. Ask people that are married. Praise the Lord. Ah, praise the Lord. I want to know if we are still here, if I'm still making sense. <laughs> okay, it's not the cure to your financial problems. Ask people that are married. Marriage is not the cure to your financial problems. And a man is not the cure to your financial problems. He's not God. Don't be like Rachel, uh, give me children or I die. If you tell him, he said, no, and what did um, Jacob tell us? Am I God? I'm not God. So don't go there and say, give me money. Uh, and you demand is not God. So you should learn to build your financial, um, you should learn to build your financial capacity as a lady because it prevents you from all those temptations. The temptation of, because without contentment, the temptation of, I want to buy this, I want to buy that. You know, I told you in the days when I was going to school, we didn't really have, um, there were no GSM phones. So I knew people that actually lost their virginity, lived lifestyles because they wanted to get buy a phone. And the phone that they wanted to buy was 3310, Triumph. He said, Jesus, to then it was, that's how in the generation that is to come, they will tell you, ah, Jesus, is it this thing that, is it this thing that you are losing your virginity for, bone straight, that is no longer raining? Or, you know, and then it was so cool, though, that you have a flat phone that is so small, that has color screen, and that can do infrared. I thought, you are in heaven. You are so do good. <laughs> you are so good. So you could imagine how people would lose, were lose just because of those things. That kind of phone that if you even give my son, he'd be like, what is this? He'll throw it. He'll throw it. <laughs> He'll throw it to you. Like, what, what kind of phone is this? That is 310. That is, you know. And looking back now, I wonder how those people will be feeling. Say, was it because of this thing? The, the, the pursuit of this thing that I actually gave my virginity out? Or was it because of the pursuit of this thing that I actually lived an immoral lifestyle in campus? So now, we should know our priorities. What are those in the immoral lifestyle? Because what are those immoral um, lifestyles? So he said, the lady, she is devoted in her, the Lord. She is holy in her body and holy in her spirit, man. Holy in her thoughts. That is one of the ways to the right living while you are waiting. Holy in her thoughts. Because some now, sometimes now, you see people, you see them, they are holy. They don't have, they maintain principles. That, but in their thoughts, that is where thoughts of sexual lust come in thoughts of masturbation coming, even for ladies, then thoughts of pornography coming. Because how do they guard what they see, what they watch? Some people are like, hey, you know I'm lonely. That's why I'd be like, please don't be lonely. You are not a lady, you are not alone. You have a lot of sisters around you. Even if you stay alone, please get somebody to live with. Because sometimes staying alone self, it even brings temptation. Get a sister to live with you. Well, all this I'm saying, I want to be alone, I want to be alone. I don't know where we got that someone from. Praise the Lord. At least as we live together, get a sister to live with. You know, I want to live alone. You're in campus. Please get a roommate and a sister, a godly one. Because she will help you in your pursuit. You know, in your devotion to God, it's not a time that where you just idle around. That time we're taught that if you, don't, if you don't have anything, if you finish lectures, you finish with you, you don't have anything to do, come to church. There's always work to do in church. There's always evangelism to do. Yes, there's always follow-up to do. And sometimes living with somebody, it even helps your prayer life. You'll be like, okay, come, let's pray. Because it's because of this lack of zeal. That is why you see, you see Christians who so they are gathered, Christian sisters, they are gathered. But you know what they are discussing about? Somebody in church. When they should be discussing about prayers. When they should be doing DBS on what was learned today. It can even happen today as you are going now. Some people are, some people are going to sleep. You know what they are discussing? Eh, do you know this person did that? Do you know this person did that? Gossip. But amongst Christian sisters in your devotion, what should be, what should be your burning desire is the things of the Lord. That is how it is. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. Your delight, delight yourself in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. So most things, our burning desires, what are they? You see sisters are gathering and the only thing they're discussing is latest hair, latest fashion. But that's not what it should be as in Christendom. What you 
it should be your focus is the, how you should please the Lord. That's why service should be the in thing. That's why passion for God should be the in thing. When they say come out for evangelism, people that should be at the forefront should be the singles. Because you don't have any, you, know, you have little or no responsibility. Come out for prayers, it should be the one. It should be the one on fire for God. Because sometimes those deposits, you go into the future to deposit it. Because you sit down and you're praying in tongues, you go into the future to deposit it. So what do you use your time to do? To create content that have no value. Because sometimes yeah, everybody wants to be a content creator. Is it to create content that have no value? Because sometimes you're begging people, like, like, please now, like my comment now, please like my comment, please now, subscribe, subscribe. Because, it, because truth, if it's have value, it will go viral. You don't need, you don't even need to beg people to subscribe. It will go viral. No, but it's the time that you need. Why waiting? Your disposition should be one of a, of a king's daughter, devoted to the king's daughter, devoted to the king himself. The disposition, your, even your attitude should be one that is disposed, um, devoted to God himself. Zealous for the things of God. Because that is where you have the strength of, of, of your youth at age. And you don't have any distraction. It's not when you tell singles, come to church, eh, eh, you don't have time. Sometimes even when you tell them to, you know, people that don't have time, I used to tell them, I say, people that, I, I used to tell people around me, say if you don't have time, that means when they are saying, because you've been exchanging your time for money, if you don't have time, that means when they say, please, we need to sponsor single summit, you should be the ones that should bring money. But this one, you don't have time, you don't have money, you don't have value. In the kingdom of God, your name is not stamped. Now, because when they say bring, now you say, I don't have money. Everything you don't have. Time you don't have. Money you don't have. And when King was Yes. So you need to devote. It's, it's a time where you need, you need to sell out yourself for God. Because that is how you reap the service of God. Like I said, you cannot, you cannot say you want to reap the service of the kingdom when you are not walking in the kingdom. You cannot. So when I say holy in spirit, it's because most times you have, you have that lonely area on your own. Saying, I don't know what to do, so I was just surfing the internet. So I now decided to. Yeah, it's because you kept yourself to be idle. When there are a lot of things to do, you say, what will I do now? No. Because you left yourself to be idle. That's why you have time to now say, okay, I now, I'm now, I'm, I'm, I now have addictions to porn. And that's why I now say, I now have addictions to masturbation. No, it's because you have, you have excess time on your hand. You, sometimes you miss church, no reason. I just want to rest. And you've been resting. You know, the Bible said, I think it was King Solomon, he said, do all you can now. No. He said, because when you go to the grave, he said, there will be no rest, there will be no walking and this thing. You will have enough time to rest till the resurrection comes. Mm, yes, you have enough time to rest till the resurrection comes. So now, as a single lady, devote yourself to God. Devote yourself to be holy in spirit. Because it will be holy in body. Devote yourself to be holy in your spirit, man. Where your thoughts are just the things of the kingdom. Where you say, God, please renew my thoughts. Please renew my mind. Please. Because, we, you know, like when we did our mother's song, we say, is these things that you know that you pass on to the next generation? But sometimes you don't even know the things that we know. We have single ladies that, okay, if you ask them, so how do you know that? And why, who said you should, why, how do you know that we should flee sexual immorality? They don't even have scriptures. How do you know who you are? They don't even have scriptures. We, the time we use it, we use it to soft the internet. We use it to soft. No. It is a time that you need to devote yourself to self-development, to devote yourself to knowing God, and devote yourself to knowing who you are. Devote yourself to having a right walk with God. Then sometimes you'll be like, ah, but I have been, been this, I've been... I've been going on and on, and you cannot keep yourself. But there's help, and there's a bam in Gilead. Praise the Lord. There is a bam in Gilead that can help you. And he said, I can help you to, he said, God can help you to keep yourself. You know? I said, we should make our boundaries clear. Know what your boundaries are. Know what, where your weak points are. Sin thrives in, sin thrives in secrecy. Avoid secrecy in relationships. Learn to be open. Learn to be open in your relationship. Learn to make your, um, authority, know your relationship, Learn, even your friends, they should know, they should know, so that they will know what to correct and what not to correct, and what you, um, you should look out for. So, as a single lady, the Bible said the bed is on the fight. That's one thing you should take seriously, the bed is on the fight. Illicit relationships is a no-no, premarital sex is a no-no. You know, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, that scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 
18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. So what the scripture said is, you know, sometimes we do things and we don't have guilt because everything we do, we lie. It doesn't involve your body. You just set it out. Maybe you stole. It doesn't involve your body. But the sin of sexual immorality, it involves your own body. That's why sometimes the, the, the guilt is difficult to go. You'll be like, this thing, it involves my own body. Then the next verse, verse 19. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have, and you are not your own? Verse 20. And you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirits, which are God. Verse 21. Okay. Okay, go back to 18. Let's read. So the Bible said, flee sexual immorality because every other sin a man does is outside his body, but this one affects your body. It affects both your spirit, it affects both your soul, it affects both your body. It affects your spirit because the Holy Ghost that is in you, you've been there. so it gives you this spirit that is not free. Sometimes you have guilt. Then it affects your soul. You are now broken hearted. You are now emotional. You are now have emotions. Then it also affects your body. Sometimes it comes in forms of sickness. You may have some um, infections and all. And you may have some infections. You may have some, there's also what we call sexual transmitted infections. So those things, it may also affect your body. But as a single lady, you know, sometimes you see people that have some guilt in, in marriage. And sometimes when you interview them, most times it's premarital sex. You see people that have trust issues in marriage. Sometimes when you interview them, is this premarital sex? What happened? He said, hey, before we got married, blah, 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 blah. Insecurity. Sometimes there's this fear of insecurity. There's this. So as a single lady, one of the ways to live right is please live a pure life. It keeps you safe. It keeps your mind safe. It keeps your mind healthy. It keeps your body safe. You are not scared of, hey, this, do I have this infection? Do I have this one? Do I have this one? No, it keeps your conscience free. And it may go high in the realm of the spirit. Because sometimes in all those, in your quest to go and explore and explore, you quest to go and explore, what you see is that you come back with heartbreaks. You come back with loss of vision. Because sometimes, you, that's why you see people that actually involve themselves, most of them don't do well academically. They don't do well, even as a student. Some of them don't even do well business. Because what? It erodes your brain. There's what... Um, one pastor calls it Ken Katas. He said it's aerotoxins. So the thing is, it erodes your brain because your brain is now blood with a lot of erotic materials. Yes, those, they are called erotic materials. So it erodes your brain. Then most of them are blood with erotic materials. So one of the things you need to do is keep your sanity as a Christian. Know who you are. Keep your dignity. Praise the Lord. And then we are going to pray. Let's be on our feet as we pray. Let's be on our feet as we pray. In Jesus' name. Now I want us to open our mouths and um, we're going to pray. We've had um, living right as a single lady. What is expected of us as a single lady? Think about yourself. Think about your life. Make a commitment to match. That these are the things that you've started doing that you, you, you need to start doing as a single lady. These are the things that you need to walk in as a you need to walk in as a single lady. Now begin to make those commitments to God that I'm going to make a new tone. I'm going to make a new life afresh. I'm going to make, use my singlehood to serve you. I'm going to use my singlehood to be devoted to you. I'm going to use my singlehood to be committed to you in this season. Now, my single days is going to be a productive one, one that will bear fruit for you, one that will bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Open your mouth and pray, daughter of Zion. Like that scripture has said, it said the single lady, the virgin, she is devoted to the Lord. She is holy in her body. 
she's holy in her spirit. Make that commitment. Say, Lord, I give you myself. I give myself to you all over. Have your way. I'm hold, I present my body to you as a living sacrifice. Have your way. I devote, I commit to this time that this my single wood is going to be productive. I'm going to live like life as a productive single. One that is holy in my spirit, man. One that is holy in my body. One that is devoted. Have a devotion, strong devotion to the Lord. And I live my life in committed. Let the zeal of God consume me. Let the glory of God fill my life. Let God zeal, awaken my, my, my passion for you. Awaken my zeal for you. You pray that prayer as a single lady. I'm waking my zeal for you. Let your passion consume me. Let the zeal of God consume me even in this season as a single lady. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, take me in deeper walks with you. Take me in deeper experience. There are places that God wants to take you. Say, now that you are alone, there are places that he wants to walk with you. Say, Lord, help me. I don't want to miss your dealings in my life. I don't want to miss your trainings in my life even as a single lady. You may say, I've been single for so long. Yes, God has a purpose in it. There is something God is trying to do in your life. Say, Lord, walk in me. Walk in me. Lord, do teach me the things that I need to know now. Teach me the ways that I need to go now. Show me how I need to live my life now and as a single then if you are here and you are struggling with any form of addiction or the other then you still have sexual addiction and you still see yourself going back to it. It is difficult for you to set boundaries, even when you make set boundaries. And it is you find it difficult. You say you find it difficult to keep. Even after making boundaries one week, you see yourself going back to sin. And you need you know that you need healing. You can come to the altar. I said there is healing. There is healing at the altar, and God can help you. You can come to the altar and say, Lord, because it has it has passed the stage. You now there's a spirit that is now attached. It is the spirit of loss that is now attached. You see yourself going back to doing those things. It is your deliverance that you need. You say, no, you can come to the altar and say, Lord, have mercy. The first step, the first step to to deliverance is repentance. Say, Lord, have mercy. Cleanse me. Remove from me. Remove from that spirit. That thing that makes me to always go back. That I cannot set boundaries around me. That thing that always makes me not to, not to, not to take hold of the, what you want me to be. Now begin to open up your mouth and pray. The Bible said, yes. He said, he told, Jesus Christ told that to my Lord, trust woman. He said, yes, you have sinned. He said, but neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. Now begin to open up your mouth and begin to pray. I break hold of any form of addiction in my life. I break hold of any form of any form of slavery in my life. I break hold. I choose to live a pure life. I choose to live. Help me, Lord, to understand, to live my life pure, even as a single lady in the mighty name of Jesus. Make that commitment to purity even from now, even from now till, till your marriage. Say, Lord, I make that commitment. Ama kalida ba kalaba da ba kiara hada kada kada ba haki ane kidos. Ama 
Kayama Kira Malabari Shikini Brikina Mahalida Kaluski Abali Ane Kito Sukina Malabara Bakiana Hada Kadakarabadash Ipukuru Brina Hadisi Kalahalida Kadiana Mikina Brinusi Alahalin Tishinkina Halisi Libra Nama Kira Halide Brikinumus in Ahali Kana Hadiasi Aladada Bakadia Hadiana Kini Brikini Mikina Hadiana Kinabriti Sukusinkira Hadish Ekinene Sikalana Makadia Hadia Sukina Manadish Iprana Kina Hali Kina Halida Bakana Bahara Kariani Kini Mikinus Kina Halisa Ipruna Kashiti Brikana Hadakaniana Hadiana Kida Bakadis Epre Kali Ani Kinus Yana Bahalas Ekini Midishita Hadiani Kini Nidi Brikinubutu Sikida Radis and Hadisi Ninati in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed Lord making a has in her we pray for everyone in this auditorium Lord even as even as we leave this message, Lord, we ask for grace, O oh God, to live our lives in devotion to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let's make a new commitment to God. Say, Lord, I will serve you as my singlehood and I will be fruitful in my service in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray for everyone here. We pray, O oh God, that there will be a fruit for you, even as singles, that they will live a lifestyle for God in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone under any form of a Addiction, we come against it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we ask that you have your way. We ask, oh God, that you have your way in our lives, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way. Do your own things, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. For in Jesus' name we have prayed.